Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, what we're going to do is actually a little bit different. I'm actually going to play for you here a segment from one of our coaching calls from the Success Society, which is our advanced coaching community, which takes place on Tuesdays. Every every single Tuesday at noon, we meet and we talk about everything outside of the application. So our regular coaching calls are Wednesdays for applications and Tuesdays are our advanced coaching call days, where, as I said, we talk about everything outside the application, because as we know, there's more to life than the application, right? And often our advancement, actually all the time, our advancement comes from what else it it is that we're doing, from the other things that we're doing and how we deal with that, how we manage that stress, how we manage the pressure. And it's not all about the application. It's actually about our lives and what we're doing with them, how we're responding to situations of pressure, how we are dealing with pressure, how we're dealing with external influence and external approval, internal approval and validation. And so one of the reasons I wanted to play you this segment from one of our coaching calls in the success society is because I think it's really important that we shine a light on things that people don't want to talk about. And this may be a controversial episode, but I don't shy away from that because I know that there is a lot that needs to be said that isn't said. And I know that a lot of people are suffering in silence. And so this episode, I think, is one of probably the most important that we've had so far in the area of applications itself, themselves, and the waiting game. And what I mean by that is the time in between submitting your applications and waiting for your decisions. If you've ever written applications, or if you're starting to write your applications, or if you're in the middle of the process, what you know from your experience, quite likely, as I know from mine, is that there's so much adrenaline in the process of actually writing your application because it's go, 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 go with a plan, with strategy, with consistency, especially when you work with me and and within our community. And then you submit your application and it's like, what now? right? You like have all this free time. It's sort of like after exam time that you sort of look around and you're like, okay, like what do I do with all of this spare time? And the same thing happens with applications. It's you sort of have this like cool down period and you look around and you say, okay, what do I do now? And what ends up happening a lot of the time is that we end up stressing out. We end up stressing out. We end up being really hard on ourselves. We end up overthinking the effort that we put in. We end up overthinking everything that we did in order to finish this application cycle. And we find ourselves in many cases, and I am no stranger to this because I did the same thing. We find ourselves on these chat forums. So whether they're law school chat forums or med school chat forums or dental school chat forums, whatever they are, somehow we creep onto them and we get stuck and we end up in this downward spiral on these chat forums where people are talking about scores and GPAs and how they got in and whether or not you can get in. So this actually happened and it happens all the time, but it was raised by one of our members in the Success Society community. And what they said was, listen, you know, I rewrote my LSAT. I got a way better score. And now I'm finding myself on these chat forums because I'm, you know, essentially is so insecure about whether the improvement in the score is enough. Now, you know, I want to temper this by the fact that their written materials are also just 
unbelievable. They were amazing and totally, totally solid, genuine, authentic, individual, polished, amazing. And so I have no doubt about this applicant. But of course, when we are the applicant, we don't see the same things because it's really hard to sort of see the forest for the trees and to see what's happening outside of, of ourselves and our minds. And so this applicant, member of our community came to this coaching call and said, listen, I, I, I'm really worried, you know, people on the chat forum, they say that, you know, they got the same score or they got a score that was below or above or whatever, and they got in or didn't get in or whatever. And what I want to play for you today is my response. And my response is based on my experience with chat forums, not only as an applicant, also as, uh, but also as a student and also as an admissions committee member, and also as in my role here at Apply Yourself, where I'm day in and day out helping applicants navigate applications to graduate and professional schools and also all of the other layered aspects of what it means to be applying and how we're spending our time and energy. And so this is my response to the concerns that our member raised about the chat forum and how insecure they were feeling. I think it's also really important to note that as usual, we keep all of the names and identities of our members in our coaching sessions anonymous. So I've edited out all of their voices. I've edited out all of their identities. So all you will hear is my response to what they've said. And let me know how you feel about this. Send me a, an email, adrian at applyyourselfglobal.com. Send me an email and let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if you have experienced this same thing, these same feelings. I know I have. And I hope that you find a lot of value and a lot of comfort too in what I say here, in my perspective, in how I frame the discussion here. And I, I hope to hear from you in your journey. So with that, I will begin the episode, which is one of our coaching calls. So here you go. So here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with anything that you submitted. There's nothing wrong with it. The fact that you improved your score is great and you just have to let the process unfold. I know that that's really hard, but there's no, there's no other way around it. You just have to wait. And you're doing other things. You're being productive while you wait, which is important. But there is a process of when you submit a second score, they're like, they're not reviewing it for with your first score, right? They have to review with your second score. And so that it may tack on some time, right? Because they're reviewing hundreds, if not thousands of applications, right? So it doesn't, just because you're not hearing back from them in February, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Just calm down. I know that's hard, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay. And, and you're checking forums, you said. You're, you're torturing yourself. This is a horrible idea. And people on forums don't always tell the truth. There are people, just so you know, and we all know them, there are people who will go on right on the forum that they got in when they may not have because it's anonymous. Nobody's using their real names on these forums. They may be writing that they got in when they didn't. They may have gotten a rejection and they may be upset about it. And they may intentionally want to cause anxiety for other people who are still waiting. They may have gotten in, but they may not be telling the truth about their score. I've seen this happen because they're so pissed off and they're competitive and scarcity minded. They haven't gone through any of this training or work that you have. And this is like what I talk about when I say people are really, really toxic when it comes to competition. People are not sitting here like we are talking about this. People are crying in their bedrooms. People are using substances. People are like, I've seen it all. I would not touch those forums with a 10 foot pole, like a hundred foot pole, like a kilometer foot. Like I wouldn't, I, I, I want you to stay so far off of them that you forget about them. That's what I want. Everything is anonymous. No one has to tell the truth. There's no fact checking. Nobody on admissions committees is verifying anything that's being said. The schools 
don't comment on those forums. They don't even look at them. The schools don't give a shit about those forums because they know it's the Wild West. People are constantly lying on those forums. I'm telling you this from experience. I know for a fact, okay? I want you to stay out of this toxic environment because you've done all this work and now you are putting yourself back into that toxicity, right? I don't want you to take steps back in the work that you've done to focus on yourself, to showcase yourself. And now you're like engaging with blank caricatures. Like we don't even, you don't know who they are. You don't know what they're on. You don't know anything about these people. A lot of them in these forums, no matter if it's the med school forums, the law school forums, the dental school forums, the grad school forums, no one has to tell the truth. There's no fact checking. There's nothing. And everyone who's writing on those forums is, I would say 99% of those people are not actually trying to help anybody. They are trying to satisfy their own insecurity by making other people feel less than. What is the point of putting your score up on a forum? Who cares? Who cares? They're putting the score up. Even Let's say it was the real score. They're putting it up because they're insecure about the other part of their application or their grades. Like who, who in their right mind is putting up their score, even anonymously on a form? What would compel somebody to do that? Insecurity. Insecurity, anxiety, the need for ego boosting, the need for external validation and external approval. Why are we feeding into that? We're not. Live your life. See your friends. Spend time with your family or whoever you like to spend time with. Get off of those forums. Don't even search them. Don't even go. I I cannot even begin to tell you how much your life will improve when you just focus on you. So when you feel the urge to go on, I want you instead of actually going onto those forums to think to yourself, why do I feel the urge to go on? Is it to satisfy your own insecurity? It may be. In fact, I don't know why anybody else would go on those forums except that they're insecure and they want answers that nobody has because nobody on those forums is on admissions committees. And I'm telling you, I'm on admissions committees. Nobody on admissions committees is on those forums. Okay. So I want you to stay off of those. I want everybody to stay off of those because they're complete crap. And then what do you do? You come here and you say, is there something wrong with the rest of my application? Is there something like, come on, (laughs) like, you know, and you have recordings from the sessions, you know, your materials are spot on, right? You know that. I remember how proud you were of your materials. I remember how excited you were. I remember how much you said, you, like when we were working together, you said, how do you know me better than I know myself when we were working on your materials? Do you remember that? And now you're doubting that because some asshole wrote a score on a forum. So all that work that is actually skills building, transferable skill for you for the rest of your life, some anonymous ass is taking that away from you. Don't let them do that. That's what, that's actually what they want. They want you to be insecure because they're insecure and they're trying to bring everybody down with them. This is the non, non-competition piece of what we do here because that's what it does to people. That's what it does to people. And those are the people that are ripping pages out of textbooks. Those are the people that are giving people wrong answers. Those are the people that are lying about how much progress they've made to make you feel bad when you're studying for exams. Those are the people. I went to school with them. I know them. I see them. I'm I'm their professor. Like I can spot them from a year, from like years away, but you're not that. Nobody here is. There's a reason you're here and they're not. You value different things than they do. And you know that with the works that we do here, the way that you advance is different than anybody else. You're not giving people wrong answers. You're not lying to people. You're not making other people, other people feel bad based on your numbers versus theirs. You are operating under a different philosophy, under a different way of life, under a different school of thought that actually is healthy and sustainable and will support you for the rest of your life. Because it's not just about the application. And because it's not just about the application, I want you to look at what kinds of people those are. And if you met them in person, would you be friends with them? So why are you letting them affect how you feel, right? Stay off those junk forums. The forums are there because of insecure people who started the forums, who now make ad money off of being there because so many people go on because they're insecure. So they can charge higher ad spends because their viewership is increased, meaning that more people are clicking, more people are going to see the ads, ad spend goes up. Everything, everything, like why are, like, you have to like 
see all the different angles here, right? I can guarantee you, firstly, don't worry about any of that garbage. You started this conversation by saying, I improved my score. Let's celebrate that, right? Because that's work that you did. And so what I want to transition this into is actually a celebration of the work that you did in order to accomplish that. Because that's it's hard work to improve a score. So congratulations on your improved score. Like that is a huge win. So let's talk about what worked for you in order to improve that score. These are huge shifts, huge transformations because you had to change the way you think about the process in order for your score to increase because you change the way you think, you change the way you act because you're changing your strategy and then you see the results. That's what you did. That's huge. You know how much, like you know how much work that is. So don't let anyone else ruin that sense of accomplishment because no matter what happens, you did that. Once it's out, once the application is submitted, it's out of our hands, but there's no point in doubting it when you know that your materials are top notch. They are super strong. Everybody coming out of this community, their materials are super strong. You improved your score. There's, and then it's out of your hands. Then it's up to who's on the committee and can they, can they relate? What else are they considering? Because there's so many things that happen behind the scenes that they're never going to disclose. Okay. So we can never predict what's going to happen. We know our chances are obviously good. But don't, don't worry about the month. Don't worry about the month. In 20 years, do you think you're going to remember, oh, I got in in February and not June or July. And so then I'm like, you know, this is some sort of like reflection on me. Do you think I remember what month I got in? (laughs) No. And in fact, you get into different schools at different times, right? Like, and, and then there's like this waiting game. Once you do get into multiple schools as, okay, but I need to respond to this school by this date. But what if I don't hear from that school by then? Like then it turns into a different kind of stress, right? So don't put yourself in a situation where you have to sift through garbage. I'm telling you, you're not going to find any value on those sites. None, none. And that's why we're here. Because if you didn't come here, you would be spiraling down all these forums like everybody else. I'm telling you they're garbage. Nobody should be on them, okay? You don't need to be on them. No one needs to be on them. Just focus on what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing. Don't give in to this stupid system of pressure that has been created because other people are insecure. So none of us here should ever be on those forums. I'm telling you, there's nothing useful on them. Oh, everybody knows something I don't know. No, they don't. They do not. I'm telling you, they do not. Even what's your in-law school or your master's program or whatever, people are going to be talking as if they're the authority on everything. They don't know anything. They don't know more than you do. They're in the same class as you are. It doesn't matter because no one knows. No one really knows what they're talking about (laughs) as students. It helps them feel better when they can sound like an authority on something. You know, like when I was in law school, there was this group of guys who studied together. They did everything together. Like, you know, it was like this very like crewy crew crew. And they would get their exam grades back because they would be posted, of course, while everybody is in like the first class of the day. And during break time, they lit, I'm not kidding, this actually happened. They would like run down the hall, high-fiving each other. Now, whether because they all like presumably got A's. Now, whether they did or not is not the issue because there's actually no way for anybody to know what anybody's grades are. So they could easily, and this happens when you're in very competitive environments, they could very easily have gotten B's and told their friends they got A's so that they didn't feel bad about it. There's no way, like, (laughs) like the way that the curve worked, there's no way they all got A's. Like, there's just not. And so when you see that, That is pure acting out of insecurity because if they were actually secure with themselves, what they would have realized was there are other people sitting in this class who studied really, really hard, who maybe got a B or a C and they're sad about it. They're upset about it. And so instead of running through the halls, like they're in a jungle, maybe, maybe like staying humble and quiet is actually the way to go because other people studied other people. And I know, I know a lot of these people use substances, not that that got them the grade. It didn't, it got them a lot of side effects, to be honest. And I ended up driving some home sometimes because of the things that they were taking, but it's all happening out of insecurity. People 
you know, like this. So what I'm trying to say is that the people who are writing this junk on the forums are the same people who are doing the same shit in law school or med school or dental school or whatever. The same competitive behavior, the same scarcity minded behavior, the same small, petty behavior that makes them feel better in the moment. But then they're going home and we don't see what's happening behind the scenes. I do because I've been called. We don't see them in the emergency room. We don't see them drinking themselves to sleep. I've seen people drinking at law school at eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning because of stress, because of this, because of that. And then these are the people who develop substance use problems and who end up with no one to call because they're ashamed because they don't know who to call. This is so what I'm coming to you with is this incredibly well-rounded strategy way of life that protects you from all of that garbage because it's not just the forums. It's the people behind those forums. It's the people who thrive, but they're not thriving on what they're writing on those forums. I feel very passionately about this as you could tell. And it's these people who end up in a really harmful place now and in the future. It's these people who are suffering from side effects, who don't want to be suffering from side effects alone. They don't realize necessarily what's going on. And so what they're doing is offering all their friends what they're doing so that they don't feel alone. I was offered drugs in the library. Like, leave me alone, number one. I'm studying. And number two, like, what does it take for somebody? Like, what position are they in? Like, think mentally what position somebody is in to walk up to somebody and offer you drugs in a library and they don't even know you. So this is part of a much bigger problem. These forums are a part of a much bigger problem and we don't have to buy into it. You don't have to buy into it. You don't have to concern yourself with it. You should actually know this is not a place for me. This is not a place for me. These people are not people that I want to be around online or in person. And then you have to watch out that you're not getting caught in these groups of people because it's like the cool thing to do, right? One of those same guys that I was telling you about in the first week, like or like a week or, or orientation week, stole, so there was like a boat cruise that my school put together, stole a beer because he thought like he was larger than life. I saw him do it. Everybody saw him do it. The bartender saw him do it. And he full out denied it. And he almost caused the entire ship to be pulled over and the whole thing to be done until he admitted it, gave it back and paid for it. But this was like 30 minutes of him denying it. No doubt he was on something else. Also trying to look cool in front of all these new people, trying to feel good enough because he felt really insecure. That's my bet. This is the same person that's running up and down the halls, high-fiving people. We don't know what their grades are and it doesn't matter. And then this is the same person that at OCIs, and I've told this story on the podcast, same person at OCIs, so on-campus interviews, which actually are not on campus, is standing in front of me in line, tells me that my interview location has been changed from this curtain to that curtain. Nothing, there had been no indication that anything had been changed. Our registrar admissions, like officers, were there guiding the whole process. And he said to me, this location for your interview has been changed to like curtain 27 instead of 53 or something. And I looked at him and I said, I don't think so. Like nobody's told me that. And he goes, no, 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 it has. I just heard. And you're like, you have to be in line like 30 seconds before you're released into like the massive curtains. And then you have to find your curtain that your interview is in. And then you go behind the curtain, you sit down, you have a 10 minute interview and then it's over. So there's like no time here. So what he was trying to get me to do was like being a rat race, wasting my time to figure out which curtain it was, even though nothing had been changed. And then he said to me after this, he goes, you know, I don't know why we don't hang out more. I don't know why we're not friends. The admissions officer came by and, or whatever, I forget her title, came by. I said, hey, listen, like, did this change in front of him? She said, nope, nothing has changed. I looked at him. I said, that's why we're not friends. And then it was go time. And we all went to our interviews. This is the same person. These are the people that are writing on the forums. These are the people that are lying. These are the people that even if they're not lying, are making other people feel bad. And it's not, they're not just existing on the forums. They're like real live people that are actually so insecure and so scarcity minded and so 
competition based, that they're actually willing to hurt other people. And that's not okay with me. And that's why I created this community. One of the many reasons. So I want you to re- know what is garbage and what is not. Okay. This is for everybody. I want you to know what is garbage and what is not. Forums are garbage. There's no actual accurate information on them that is vetted by schools. And that's all that matters. And you know that what the schools are releasing are also not exact anything, right? They're averages, medians. Sometimes, sure, there's a cutoff, but they're still an average. And you know that they release information on this was somebody's political background or like this, you know, somebody was in political science, somebody was in biology, somebody's in engineering. Like people are getting in no matter what you're doing. And it depends on, yeah, the scores, yeah, the grades, but so much of it depends on your, your materials. And sometimes they take a little longer to consider them and that's okay. And sometimes they speak to the admissions committee and depending on who's, who's on it and who's not, you draft for sort of the, who you think is going to be on and what they'll relate to. And there's a lot of strategy around that because most people will relate to a lot of things if it's drafted in a way that's compelling and authentic and actually rests in your, your experience and your growth. But people are fighting on admissions committees all the time too, right? This is what I want to, like, this is also what I bring to you here is the behind the scenes of I have literally been on admissions committees where, where academics are standing and screaming at each other because they want one candidate and somebody else wants another. And then they're trading the materials back and forth and they're poking holes in every, so, and you could be, this is the stuff that's going, this is what's going on behind the scenes in some cases. So you can do your absolute best, but you cannot control what goes on at the table. And there, there's a finite number of spots. That's the truth. But this is why focusing on yourself is so important and not on the competition because at a certain point it's out of your hands and you can do your absolute best and be satisfied with it. And anything beyond that is, you know, you do your best. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, we try again. And we're very honest about that. It's impossible for everybody to get in on the first time. Impossible. I didn't get, I got into some schools my first time, but not the ones that I wanted, right? I had to improve my score and I ended up doing a PhD in the middle. I could have gone to one of the schools that I had gotten into without a PhD, but I actually wanted the PhD and it's a different story, but I had to improve my score. This is like, I'm cut, like, I don't come to you with, with, without experience doing the exact same things. The reason I know the strategies work is because I did them. I took three different prep classes. I took one for the MCAT, two for the LSAT. I had private tutoring for the LSAT. I know what works because it takes time. It takes strategy. It takes support. It takes learning. Like it takes sitting there alone over and over and over and over again, doing logic games at night before you go to bed, like just figuring out how to stretch your brains in the right way so that you can just bump up like one or two points or five points or seven points or 10 points or however many points. And then when I became an admissions committee member, you realize that all that effort, firstly, people on the admissions committee are often so far removed from that process. They can't even remember what it was like for them, or they've like dissociated from it almost because it was so traumatic for them, or they just simply don't remember, or it was a different time. And they've had full careers by this point that a five point increase, they literally will spend like one second looking at that. They're not going to, they, they generally are not going to think about, oh my God, how much work did that take them, right? And so it's so important that you know what you did. That's, and that's all that you can do. And if we need to try again, then we try again. And we have your foundation set. You don't have to start all over again, all over again, okay? So don't worry about the month. Do not go onto these forums looking for any sort of support. You're not going to find it, Okay. They give you nothing accurate and nothing positive. Maybe there's the odd person being like, you can do it. But like, you don't need some anonymous person telling you you can do it. You know you can do it. You're doing it. Like, it's complete trash. Your your time is honestly better spent doing almost anything, like basically anything else, including sleeping, going for a walk, seeing friends, seeing family, watching Netflix, listening to a podcast, walking a pet, making food, learning a new recipe. I mean, I could come up with a billion things to do instead of sitting and crying in front of a forum. I was on them too. I get it. But I'm telling you, being on those forums did not get me anywhere close to where I wanted to be. And I realized that really quick 
when everybody's anonymous, there's no fact checking, and it's an echo chamber of nerves, anxiety, and insecurity. And that is not the kind of life that I want to live. And I know it's not the kind of life you want to live either. The thing is, is I don't see myself as like a victim of like the competition. I'm able to see that other people's behavior has nothing to do with me and everything to do with them. I've talked about it in my first year with people, with my fumehood partner, Sabotage in my chemistry lab. I've talked about it with people ripping out pages of textbooks. I've talked about it in study groups when people are purposely giving the wrong answers. Like it happens all the time and students feel so alone in these moments and so betrayed by the people who they hoped to trust or thought they could trust. And it turns out that it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And the fact that they are not receiving the support that they need and they need to actually be part of a community like this in order to be able to live the kind of life that they want and get there in a way that is actually respectable and get there in a way that, you know, you can look back and say, I feel good about how I did that. Not, I have to block this out because I behaved so egregiously against another person. So at the end of the day, we ask ourselves, what kind of people do we want to be? Who do we want to be in this process? Who do we want to be in life? Do we want to be the people who give in to these forums and, and sit on them and bit, like live and breathe the crap on these forums and type into the, or do we want to live life, let things unfold, do our best and be able to move on and build and take people along with us who support us and who we support. It's 100% up to us to make those choices. And if I had somebody telling me this 10 years ago, 15 years ago, whenever I was doing this, I would have wasted a lot less time and I would have felt a lot less insecure And I would have felt a lot less anxious. And so I'm telling you at the beginning of your process, don't give into this. I think that that is so vitally important that you keep asking yourself, what is the kind of energy that I want? How do I want to be spending my time? Is this adding to me my growth? Is this a valuable way to spend my time and my energy? Two things which I will never get back. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.